Uh, the goal this year, as in past years, is exploration. So we are exploring a cave called El Diablo, and we're hoping to connect it to uh, Aerolito. Uh, and so we've got a survey in progress. The caves are super close together, uh, and they're within a, a really exciting dif uh, distance. Uh, but to get uh, to where we can try to close that gap, we need to see if we can correct the survey to see if we're way off, if there's some problem with the survey, or if uh, they are as close as we think they are. And so we're hoping to do some, some radio locating to do so. Wait, is this distance as uh, a vector? All distances. Yep. And then we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Radio location gives us a way to uh, find how a, a point in the cave relates to a point on the surface. And so we can set up a radio underground that transmits in a way that uh, as long as that's level, we can walk around on the surface and figure out when we're right above it. And so that'll give us a GPS tie-in for that part of the cave. Wait, Gus is ready to go, wow. Speed man. Get out of the way. All right. Uh, so the radio location works by having a, a radio that transmits underground and that uh, antenna has a field that looks like a donut. It's a, a toroid. Uh, and so you can take a receiver on working on the same frequency uh, and walk around on the surface, and depending on the angle of that antenna, you can figure out where you are in the, the donut field. Uh, and so you, you walk around, and uh, when you're directly above the transmitter, you can hold the antenna vertical, and it'll, it'll give you the lowest signal. Uh, we call that a null. Uh, and that gives you a pretty uh, definitive point for uh, knowing you're directly above. If you take a couple of steps to the right, you know, you should hear it. To the left, you should hear it. But when you're vertical, directly above uh, should be the lowest possible signal. I think I'm being insulted and I can't even hear it. No, not you. <laughs> <laughs> You're being a good buddy. Right here, we want to get Mike and I rolling this one. Yeah. Uh, debate so we want to get Mike and I rolling. Oh, wait. Up to you guys. I did. Um, I don't know if there yeah, is. I think I really did. I, I just, just need like 15 or 20 minutes of your time, and then if you're in a really you have yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Once you go down there. 10 feet, you'll be better. What's going on? So this is the radio location gear. Two loops. One transmits, the other receives, and uh, this, these are the headphones that I use to hear what's going on. A little board in here, a board. waterproof, and a battery. This isn't waterproof, that nope. one is. Ah, okay. Looks like it, almost. I know, it's not. It's All in a plastic year. box, yes, but it's not waterproof. Wouldn't want to drop it in the water. All right. And I may still have to add layers later. I got it. Okay, so what, what were you doing today, Mike? What was your mission? I was working with uh, John with the radio location technology we're, we're using on this trip. Uh, 
my job was to take the transmitter, which is the piece that goes in the water, and to place it in the cave at a location for John then to try to locate on the surface. So what what'd you do on your dive today, Mike? So started the dive, we started at the entrance to the cave. I was carrying kind of three things to deploy the antenna. Uh, the actual antenna itself, a battery to power the antenna was clipped off on one shoulder, and then a bottle uh, to use to inflate with air to uh, help place it in the cave. swam through the cave. We started on the guideline that the first team had put in, eventually hit the, hit the bay line at about 200 feet, and then I went about another 50 to 100 feet uh, down the gold line in the cave until I found a location to put the, cave, to put the uh, transmitter on, on the ceiling. Uh, mm. I ended up hanging it and leveling it, which took a few minutes. Uh, it was a little difficult getting the battery hooked up because that involves a little two-prong connection that has to be screwed in. Uh, and once I got that, then there's an off-on switch. You need to make sure it's, it's turned on, obviously. And then you have to verify the function of the transmitter, which has a little flashing light. So anyway, I, I was able to deploy the antenna and looked up the battery, battery verified it was working and then uh, went out of the cave to just let John know that it was working and he, he was good to start looking for the transmission uh, above ground. Uh, then I ended up later actually moving it closer to the front of the cave. It was pretty much the same process. We just wanted to move it closer to the front uh, to get a better idea of how well it was transmitting. So one of the difficulties or challenges in deploying the transmitter is it needs to be level under the water. Um, it's round and it has four levels, kind of like spokes on the inside of it. You need to get it as level as possible so it will transmit properly. So one of the challenges is, is getting it hung and then adjusting it so that it's mostly level so it will transmit properly. And also in, in making that that determination where to hang it. There's some flow in the cave, which can obviously cause it to move, so we want to try to hang it outside of the flow. We also want to have it somewhere where another diver or team going through is not going to disturb it. So those were kind of the challenges uh, in deploying it. It took me several tries to kind of adjust it to get it to a point where it was mostly level, uh, so it would, it would have optimal transmission.
You got somebody in there with a ping or no? Yeah, he says it's like right underneath us, but all I can hear is the power line noise. Ugh. That's going to be frustrating. Yeah. And we're like 300 feet from it? From the road? Yeah, what's his name? Warned me that the power lines could be an issue, so I... Yeah. We tried radio locating at Aerolito the other day. Uh, I had built a, a basic radio unit that uh, Brian Pease put together. Uh, it, it's, it's basic so that it's easy for people to put together and easy to troubleshoot and, and easy to use. Uh, the unfortunate part is it's at a low enough frequency that it uh, gets a lot of interference from power lines. And so when we went to radio locate the other day, uh, I thought Aerolito would be further back from the uh, interference, but the power lines running down the road right next to Aerolito uh, caused enough interference that we couldn't hear, we couldn't distinguish the signal from the radio uh, above the noise from the power lines. So when I put the radio units together, uh, I was corresponding with, with Brian Pease, the radio guy, and, and he suggested it was a, a quick and easy radio unit, but he'd asked some questions about power lines and I uh, didn't really give him enough info. You know, he might've been able to save us a little bit of time, but he, he basically said he's got a more complicated radio that we can build. And one really nice thing about that is he's already got some uh, compact, transmitter packages that will be easier to swim than the, the giant loop we have.